and welcome to some of my friends read comics. We've got Chris. Uh, insert bad joke here. We've got Vince. I'm always grim. And uh, I'm Kia. Hello, everyone. Oh, we've got bad jokes of plenty and some good ones. Some good ones. A little bit of mix. Uh, we are reading today the Justice League International, which was a um, uh, interesting incarnation of the Justice League from the uh, mid to late '80s. Was it 1987? Is when they yeah '87. Uh, yeah, and so okay, so here's my understanding of this series so far, uh, and I'm gonna explain why we are reading issues seven through 13. Uh, and that's because, uh, in the mid to late eighties, after a crisis on infinite earths happened and everything, they pretty much rebooted everything, started over with the new justice league and then gave them sort of a more, you know, worldwide perspective and scope. And so with issue number seven, they renamed it to justice league international. Uh, and so we are reading issue number seven, which is kind of like the one where the whole changeover happens, and then the whole second arc, which is issues 8 through 13. Um, it's extra confusing because if you look at it in uh, trade paperback format, all the issues are just called Justice League International. Uh, but, you know, the series went through a number of changes, and um, I feel like we've, we've got it pretty straight now. Um, Vince, you recommended this one because uh, you had read the first volume way back when. Uh, am I right about that? Yeah, when it got reissued, probably like, what, five or six years ago? Um, I don't even know what my trade is. I'm looking for my copyright date. I think it's 2011-ish. Mm-hmm. I'd always heard really good things. Uh, was 2008, shit, okay. Well, um, apparently not 2011. So really a long time ago, eight years ago. Uh I had heard uh, a long time ago that the J- JLA, JLI was like a fun uh, iteration of the Justice League, a little mm-hmm. humorous, a little silly. And I also really liked um, – do you remember that book Crisis – or no, it was mm-hmm. Countdown to, to Infinite Crisis? That yeah. 80-page book that uh, was like a dollar that kicked off – all these mini series about infinite crisis and it ended and it was all followed uh ted cord blue beetle and like the day before he got killed and he was all like trying to get back all his friends from the jli and i'm like this character set is really cool booster gold's involved um yeah it's a lot of characters that uh you know maybe some people might not be more familiar with but blue beetle and booster gold are really fun like kind of funny ish uh uh dc justice league characters who i also i, I also remember that countdown book that i really liked as well I really liked those characters, so I was like, oh, I really want to, you know, read about them. And I knew Keith Giffen was like kind of a fun writer, and I had probably just read uh, Craven's Last Hunt by J.M. Day Mateus at that same time. So I'm like, I'm on board. Let's let's read mm-hmm. this. Yeah, and this and is written first... by both of them together as a, as a pair, Giffen and De Mateus writing together, which is mm-hmm. extra cool. Yeah, so I was like on board. But then the first arc I found kind of boring, to say the least. It was when it was Justice League. It was kind of finding its feet. They were trying to find somebody red to join the team so i don't know if it was red tornado or miracle man or rocket red it all kind of blended in my head but i remember not thinking it was very oh, interesting I, I misunderstood you vince and i thought they were specifically looking for just anyone red to join the team like man we need <laughs> no. a red guy no it's not like it's not like a green lantern situation where like we need to find somebody yellow to balance out the green no it wasn't like that it's just there's too many like red heroes in the dc at you and i'm not super familiar with all of them uh, but it was fun because Maxwell Lord, who ended up being a villain of Infinite Crisis, uh, is kind of like their handler. Uh, in the first arc, he just kind of shows up one day in the uh, Justice League headquarters, which was supposed to be secret. And he goes, hey, Batman, I've broken your headquarters. Booster Gold's joining your team now. And they're like, um, who is this dude? Uh, <laughs> and so it was fun. But then like Booster Gold, you know, just like worms his way into the team. And Maxwell Lord somehow takes it over. And I don't really know how it happened. And I even reread a little of it to try to figure it out. But I don't know. Guy Gardner is silly. He's funny. Um, he's kind of a pest and he's kind of a brat to Batman until in issue five, Batman punches him in the nose and throws his uh, Green Lantern ring uh, behind a desk and then goes off to fight a superhero mission. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. where we're starting is issue seven, where everybody's just back from this fight and Guy Gardner's still looking for his ring. Yeah, which was uh, you had mentioned that to me, and I thought it was going to be a bigger deal, and I was like, oh, "Okay, it's fun." He's, he's I looking remember it being ring. a bigger deal, but it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sorry, that's all right. But yeah, this issue is kind of wrapping up a lot of other stuff, and sort of picks up where um, 
they are trying to get approved by the UN to be, actually become the Justice League International, which, to be honest, I don't really know what that entails other than, you know, in the next few issues, they go and set up a bunch of embassies all over the world. It still just seems like they're just superheroes who are going to go around and do regular good. Uh, well, I think the name Justice League of America seems kind of jingoistic. Um, mm -hmm. And also, like, uh, they're a world superhero team. Why are they the one of America? Mm -hmm. Like, which, you know, it can be, like, patriotic and stuff, but it's also, like, Superman's defending the world. He doesn't need to be of America. And maybe that doesn't even sell as well, like, internationally to have a title of uh, of America. Does that make sense? Yeah, that it's makes like, sense. Make an international team. And I also wonder if this was getting some blowback or some, some copying of X-Men at this era, that X-Men had, like, Colossus and, you know, German uh, Nightcrawler and, you know, people from all over the world we're in one superhero team together and see how that worked. Well, um, what I'd also read is that it was a chance for them to bring in a lot of new characters because they had just acquired a bunch of different characters that some other <laughs> comic book companies, like Mr. Miracle, I think was one of them. Who else? Um, all, all the, Adams yeah, all the Charlton same. characters that uh, you know mm. better is their Watchmen version. So Blue Beetle, uh, Captain Adam, all those guys uh, had just been in their you know, in a separate universe before that. And Captain Marvel, too, although he leaves the book. Yeah, so uh, Captain, Adam Captain, is, Captain uh, Marvel, we should always mention, is the DC, like, Shazam Captain Marvel. Not Marvel's Captain Marvel, obviously. Duh. Okay, continue. He's a little boy who, um, <laughs> what, does he eat a rock, or does he just say a magic word and turn into a buff dude? Yeah, he, he, says, he says Shazam. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, so this, uh, it, it's kind of a weird issue. It has some Dr. Fate shit that I don't understand. Um, jumping There's a in lot of, a lot of stuff going on and a lot of characters who I'm just like, it doesn't feel like it properly introduces them, but at the same time, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, uh, I'm willing to let this one slide by a little bit cause it is mainly the end of that first story. Um, the main interesting parts of the new things that happen is that they kind of go up into space and fight a big space robot thing that turns out to not really be a threat at all but who sent it oh what's going on uh, uh and it's got batman in a space costume <laughs> yeah. or in a, so bat, not... batman with with mask and pointy ears is wearing an astronaut's uh helmet and full astronaut suit and also has a, like a little like uh communicator uh headphone set um in there and it's just it, it's just such a funny image to me mm-hmm mm -hmm. And um, I also, I also love. Um, did people know that Reagan had Alzheimer's in '87, or was that not something we found out until after the fact? Because the fact that like he, Reagan doesn't remember meeting Superman before. He's like, he's like, "Hello, Superman. It's great to meet you finally." And Superman's like, "We've met like a lot." Oh, uh, uh, I didn't even pick up on that. I thought it was just like the president snubbing him because like, who oh no, doesn't I remember think, Superman. Oh, that makes both so much more sense. I, but then I'm like, did we know Reagan had Alzheimer's in 87 or was that something we discovered after the fact? He must have. And yes, I don't know. I um, mean, he was old at that point. I mean, he was probably 70s, 80s at that point. Uh, it says 94 he disclosed his diagnosis. Uh, he, did, so... he did say well a lot. So Well. Yeah. <laughs> Oh boy! But but that was something that like struck out to me. And there's also yeah. in the light there's a later issue where Reagan is super forgetful <laughs> um, with Amanda Waller um, and keeps calling the Justice League like the JDI or something. The, uh, no, the, yeah, the Jewish Defense League is what he keeps calling them. <laughs> <laughs> um, which I thought was a pretty funny joke. Um, but yeah, they go up into space and they're fighting this weird thing that doesn't turn out to be much of a threat. Um, also, in order to get like approved internationally, they have to accept a few more international members. I'm not really clear on exactly why, but they bring in uh, – is that Rocky the Russians. Red? Yeah, that's like some uh, – it reminds me of the Exticles from, uh, from Frisky Dingo. Uh, if anyone <laughs> remember that. It, it just seems like one of these guys. Um, like that's this what it's like. Guys, if you don't know who Rocket Red is – then yeah. you probably know who the Exticles are. Exactly. Come on, right? I mean, well, he's part of like, I guess the Soviets had a bunch of dudes in robot suits yeah. and he's Rocket Red number seven. Yeah. Uh, there's okay. also, they also have to bring in, um, who else? One other new guy, Captain Adam, which I, I was very unclear because they never explained the international uh, angle that Captain Adam has. Why did they have to accept him? <laughs> I, it's just I think the UN, but again, I don't know why they, they need to have UN recognition. Although 
in a realistic world, it makes sense to me that like they answer to somebody and probably sure. not the American government. Mm -hmm. Um, so like, like from a logical standpoint, I'm like, this, this makes sense to me. I'm perfectly happy with all of this. Um, you know, if they are an arm of the UN, cause I, we've all, we've had the discussion, like who does shield report to? And I think it changes. Yeah. So, um, I'm okay with this. A follow up question. Captain Adam. Okay, I understand is not the atom, right? That right. the atom shrinks down. Right, right. That That's correct. correct. What is what does Captain Adam do? I don't understand. I don't know. I think he's Doctor Manhattan. Yes, he's Doctor Manhattan powers, but not his his okay. lack of personality or lack of clothes. <laughs> so by the by the end of it, uh, Doctor Manhattan's the blue dong guy. Y'all might remember him. <laughs> watch right. blue dong yeah, guy. Blue. I, I remember. No, Billy Craddock played him in, in a movie. Yep. Um, all right, so we also end up on the team. Batman says, you know what, I don't want to be in charge anymore, but I'll still hang out because now that we're international, I want to keep a low profile. Uh, and so he says, Martian Manhunter, you should be in charge. Uh, so we got Martian Manhunter, we got Batman, we have Mr. Miracle, who's kind of a generic red dude. Is, uh, he, is, he, a, is he a Kirby New God character? Yes. Okay. Um... We have Booster Gold, who, as you mentioned earlier, uh, Max Lord, the guy pulling all the strings, uh, kind of forced him to join the team. And he's from the future, right? Mm -hmm. Booster Gold is from the future. Right. He's, a, he's a failed football player from the future who says, I know what everything is going to happen in the future. Um, so I'll just time travel back and become like an awesome superhero because I'll know everything that's happening. I don't know where his robot buddy Skeets is in these books, though. Yeah, I, I, that's all I remember. He, he has a buddy named Skeets later, but I'm sure we'll get to him eventually. Not in this run, though. Uh, we also have Blue Beetle, uh, who I don't really know anything other than that he's friends with uh, with Booster Gold. Um, he's again Blue like uh, he's Chris Chris he's Night Owl from yes. uh, from Watchmen. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, he's like he's kind of rich. He's got he he he. he uh, I, I would liken him to another rich kind of inventor dude. He he owns the the uh the spaceship industries, they fly. right? Ted yeah, but, Industries. But the spaceship they have um looks like a beetle. Yeah. Um, oh, that's he, right cuz it's his. That makes sense. He yeah. he's literally nothing but comic relief in this book though. He I mean he never does. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Stuff. Yeah. Uh and then there's Black Canary who is basically our token female. She uh, is a girl. And, and that's God, her costume is awful. Much, and this, yeah. like, I don't like, I don't like the fishnet costume she has now. But this thing is like this, like ill-fitting sweater jumper, one-piece thing with like. Well, the other thing I, I notice is that literally every time we see a woman in this book, there's at least one panel that shows us just her legs, uh, and mm -hmm. that's like side characters, like you know, background or anything. It's always like, hey, let's make sure to get a shot of her legs while the other person is talking. Uh, it's Thanks, really Kevin McGuire. Yeah, Kevin McGuire. Overall, I mean, Kevin McGuire's art is mostly fine. It didn't like you know wow me. I think a lot of people just looked like old white dudes, uh, which kind of. I think his faces are all over the map, especially with like Maxwell Lord. I don't know Maxwell Lord's face changes wildly. Yeah, I don't know. Um, he does. He does a really good job of uh, adding personality to people's you know like expressions to people, and I think that's mm -hmm. part of why the book goes in the direction it does. Is they're like, oh, he's really good at doing this one thing. <laughs> so, that makes sense. Um, uh, so on top of all these members, there's also a um, a little person named Oberon. I don't know what his deal is. At I all. think he's also from from the New Gods because he knows Mister Miracle. Yeah. Okay, so he just kind of hangs out and like helps him out at the base. And that's but Oberon is also a Midsummer Night's Dream character. <laughs> yeah, but but that uh, character's not tiny. No, he's not. Oh. Kia, did you play Oberon? in high school you know i was uh, we did a weird version that combined a lot of it and so i was oberon and the other big king guy which was a weird choice who was that guy <laughs> i don't remember how that happened it was so weird Ugh. um yep. so when i think of oberon i think of this guy and you <laughs> that's cool i'm a i'm a cross between a uh, a balding little person and uh, a fairy king um <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's jump into the like real main story now uh, with issue number eight, which is moving day, which is them all kind of going around setting up their embassies uh, all around the world. Uh, I think Batman and uh, um, uh, Green Lantern Guy Gardner are setting up the Russian embassy and they're like finding bugs everywhere. Like oh, these Russians. Well, it's funny because like Batman's taking meetings 
they're like like one of the Russian guys. Like, I have a meeting with Batman at like ten o'clock, mm-hmm. so like don't be late. Oh yeah. Um, which I think post crisis, and maybe this was revisionist history of the two thousands. They tried to revise history to say Batman had never been seen in public. He was purely a myth. Um, <laughs> does this sound right? That sounds um, weird. Because I feel like in like the War Games era of Batman, like that was the first time he'd ever been caught on film. It's like 2004, 2005. And I'm like, um, JLI, he's taking meetings with the Russian consulate. Like he's in space in astronaut costumes being fully broadcast. Um, so I just find it, I, I, it's fun to see Batman in like silly context like this. I really love the idea of Batman taking meetings in costume. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's this whole series, it's post crisis, but it's weird because like there's literally references to other, like, they're like, where's Hawkman and Hawk Girl and the old league? And they're like, those days are long gone. It's like, <laughs> wait, that they never happened. Um, that's right. It's also worth noting that – so Guy Gardner, Green Lantern, he's kind of like – everyone treats him like almost a reject Green Lantern. Like he is just a piece of shit, just grumpy, and he's the worst. Um, but in that issue – in the last issue when he's looking for Batman's ri- – for the ring that Batman threw like behind the couch or whatever, he hits his head. And for the rest of at least what we're reading, he is just like a jolly, happy-go-lucky, fun, like, oh, golly, such a nice guy, you know, um, which is really weird. Doesn't appear to be going anywhere. He yeah, doesn't appear to be say, adding anything else to the story. Uh, as a 2016 yeah. reader, this is the kind of comedy that I think is stupid and has no business <laughs> being in this comic. I'm like, this sucks. Uh, I, you're I just, just making fun of head trauma. That's the whole joke. <laughs> and it just, do, again, it doesn't go anywhere. It's very, it, feel, it felt very forced to me. Um, so, eventually so he hits Chris, his head again and goes back to normal. <laughs> yep. So Chris, do you like, um, do you like the comedy of Martian Manhunter wanting Oreos delivered to his embassy? I do like that because like that, that to me is character based. Like if it's yeah. built on the character and like, okay, he has a weird thing. That's one thing. When the characters are being funny for no reason, I'm like, okay, this is stupid. Well, yeah, there's a lot of like one liners from uh, from Blue Beetle that like don't really seem to fit or like the I always wanted to say this. Yeah. Yeah. Throughout the series, anytime that happens, it's a lot of joke and then comment about the joke, which is weird. Like, what, am I the only one who's allowed to make jokes around here? Or, hey, come on, are you trying to be funny or it's it's just like over and over yeah. again. Like someone makes a joke and then someone talks about the joke. Like mm, it's sim- yeah. Sim- Stargate SG One used to do that a lot, where they'd be like, somebody would say a cliche and they go, "I know it's a cliche, but it makes sense here." Yeah. And I'm like, you can't have your cake and eat it too. <laughs> like, yeah. um, but I do like I do like uh, Martian Manhunter getting Oreos delivered. It reminded me of uh, New Frontier, where he just like loved watching TV. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it's like these are the weird appropriations of American and Earth culture that he really enjoys. Right. Well, I, well, listen, if we're being hard on the humor, I. I really did love this issue, though, because there's so little, like, typical superhero fighting. It's a lot of day-to-day operations and set up a, you know, a go to the warehouse and pick up the spaceship and just kind of humorous takes on that, with which felt very genuine. Like, Mr. Miracle tries to park their new ship on top of their new building, but their building isn't really coded for that, so it just, like, crushes the structure and they're kind of screwed. And, you know, Martian Manhunter is moving boxes and he falls through the floor. Like, it's moments that didn't feel super forced. It was like, okay, that's amusing and I enjoy that. Yeah, I liked the previous issue where Mr. Miracle was talking to his wife back home, but he's on call that night. Right. So he can't come home. He's like, I have to work overtime. I'm sorry. Like, yeah, (laughs) we we rotate nights. Big Barda is just like, look, I'm just going to go over there and beat up Batman. (laughs) Yeah. Um, oh, uh, Booster Gold and Blue Beetle are out in public, and Booster Gold says, hey, I'm going to go hit on this uh, sexy dame that I see over there. Oh, she's French, and I'm sexist. Um, and he, like, the next panel is just Blue Beetle laughing hysterically at him for failing so hard. That's a really, that's a really fun smash cut. It is, it is. Where it's it just is. like, you know, he walks up there, he's like, Booster's, like, tightening his tie, like, look at me, I'm going to be all that. And then immediately cut to uh, Blue Beetle just, like, keeled over. Laughing. Well, and then like a page or two later, we find out that that same woman is their new, uh, like, uh, you know, French embassy person, like who hangs out with them there, uh, except she hadn't seen Booster Gold in costume, just like the real person. 
Uh, and so she doesn't recognize him, of course, and that makes Blue Beetle laugh even more, which is, I think Blue Beetle just laughs this whole issue, and I love it. Yeah. That, uh, I do like again, that. it felt and very I, human. Yeah. I also like the bit um, Martian Manhunter. I, I like Martian Manhunter's sort of uh, dry uh, anti-comedy bit, although it's it's kind of yeah. doubled up with Batman, but when they say, as usual, all attempts to get comments from the League members proved futile, and then the, they just have a microphone in Martian Manhunter's face, and he just says, your attempts to get comments from League members are futile. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And then, uh, and then this, uh, this issue kind of ends with um, another team who purported themselves to be the Global Guardians. Um, they're like, um, we were supposed to be protecting the planet. Like, We're kind of like out of a job now. Uh, and I thought that was funny, but then I also liked that. So, and like, I'm like, you could still be a super team, guys. And they even say that in the issue, like, we could still keep doing this. It's not like we were sanctioned or anything. Like, we can keep yeah. doing this. Um, and then, like, basically, I think Saddam Hussein tries to recruit them. Right. Right. Oh, weird. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's what the that's that. what the, the the president of Bialya is. Oh, it's like a Saddam Hussein guy. I see what you're saying. I thought you meant uh, like later in the comics for real. Saddam Hussein shows up because that would be no. No, the Saddam Hussein analog, who appears on American talk shows in uh, earlier issues. Uh, yeah, that was weird. Um, <laughs> so uh, so our next two issues get a little weird because they kind of coincide with a big uh, DC crossover called Millennium, which it, it actually – the trade does a really nice job before each issue of telling you, hey, here's what's going on with uh, the crossover. Here's where we're at. And then after it's like, okay, here's uh, what gets us to the next issue, which is neat. But I also feel like these should just be part of a big millennium crossover because. But but then like there's weird stuff like well especially the first issue kind of like has things that tie into the JLI narrative. You're right, but the next, second the issue, next issue has like nothing to do with yeah. anything. Superman's just like the lead of it for and <laughs> Superman and Hal Jordan are like the lead of it because like we need to actually have a Justice League in this yeah. event and I'm like. But not like the lame Justice League that we're right. reading. But, um, the, but the stuff that does pertain to it is kind of interesting because in this event, it, it's basically, all right, evil robots are attacking. That's all we need. To do, but, right? they're, but they're called the Manhunters, but they're not we, the Martian Manhunters. Yeah, don't get them right? confused. It's very different. I, again, they're, but then they're, they're, they're also, they're also not Adam, in the prequel Marshman to Hunter. Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, oh, I, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Michael Mann. Um, but then they also have got they're fighting these things called the guardians, but they're not the global guardians that they're also fighting. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of repeat names. Uh, again, all I remember is robots are bad. That's it. Um, and it turns out that people like, uh, robots have like infiltrated and are, are pretending to be people. Uh, and so we find out that their new Russian buddy, rocket red is one of these man hunters. Oh no. Uh, and so they spend basically the entire issue fighting that guy. I do like though that like uh, they're like fighting inside their ship while uh, some of the flyers out in the people who uh, can actually fly are flying outside of the ship and they're like what's going on in there are they playing a prank on us <laughs> um, and I thought that was like kind of a funny concept yeah it was a fun way to sort of like you know have fun with that idea of a traitor and everyone kind of finding out a little bit at a time but being so close like I, I did enjoy that. Uh, it was a well well written fight scene and kind of reveal overall. It was a pretty fun issue, even if uh, the next issue goes even deeper into this. I mean, I don't even know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that's again. A, that's well, again, my, my my biggest complaint is you know when Black Black Canary's uh, contribution to the humor is she's like, if you'd have been called the Person Hunters, I might have joined you. Like that's her whole that's right. character is she's just but, like. Hey, I'm a woman. Take like, please notice that. Right. I mean, it's definitely great that she is uh, being written as like a feminist, but that's all she is. Like, she only shows up to say, but, but hey, it's like should, people yeah. to make funny, making fun of feminists. Right. Right. Like uh, uh, Jesse Spano from Saved by the Bell. Yeah. Oh, come on, Big Mama. It's just, yeah. Uh, <laughs> like that's. And then never. it felt and very then, weird. And then uh, the French uh, embassy. Person that uh, blue or that uh, shit that Booster Gold hit on is apparently also a Manhunter, and she shoots Maxwell Lord. I thought that was a different. Oh, was that her? Woman. I thought that was a different person. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was the same one. No, I no. thought it was. It's definitely a different person because she has oh, a name. Okay. Yeah. Uh, right, yeah, she Vulcan. doesn't have a French accent. She just says, "Yeah, the French." You'll, you'll you'll care about this memo. Murder, murder, murder. 
Yeah. Miss, Mrs. Woodenhofer is a different person. That's it. Yeah, that's Mrs. Woodenhofer. The French lady was Catherine Cobert. Oh, I th- well, I just assumed. You know, yep. I thought they were the same person. My well, bad. they're both My brunettes bad. and drawn with legs, so that's they're yeah, both that's sexy women. But the French girl's hair is kind of more up, I guess. Yeah, and longer and like punkier almost. Yeah, my or, like bad. frizzier eighties. Yeah, right. yeah, that's all right. Um, but, I uh, could understand but... your confusion because we pretty much never really hear about her again, other than like, <laughs> well, okay, so she shoots Max Lord and. All right, I guess we should kind of explain what's going on with Max Lord right now because he Ugh. is like he's he's weaselly and we're like what's going on with this guy? And it turns out I'm just going to kind of explain what the deal is now even though it's revealed to us a few issues later because I was very confused. Maxwell Lord is taking orders from a computer who is telling him how to manipulate the Justice League and eventually take over the world and blah 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 blah. And after this lady shoots him, the robot kills her and proceeds to save Maxwell Lord's life. Um, and again, I was just like very lost uh, at this point because I knew there was a computery thing involved, but I still would have liked a little bit more clarity somehow. Uh, I, I don't know if you guys felt the same way or if you if. I'm just stupid. Yeah, there's 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 plot points that are kind of missed at that point. Um, I, I, I think it's kind of a fun slow burn. I went back and read. I'm like, oh, OK, so I can see like all these events, like once they reveal it, like in a later issue of like how this all mm-hmm. came to be and how mm-hmm. Maxwell Lord was manipulating. I was like, this is fine. Um, but it seems confusing in the moment. I What's not did, you're right. I enjoyed the reveal and reading the this is how I did this and this is and then I did that and that's why I did that. You know, that yeah. was a fun read. It actually makes me almost feel like I read that whole first trade because it recaps mm-hmm. a lot of it through his mm-hmm. eyes. And so I was like, oh, OK, cool. I didn't have to read that. Yeah. Well, and knowing that, like, I, I, I don't know what would have been like that, but I knew that Maxwell Lord like ended up killing uh, Ted Cord Blue Be- Beetle later like, on. Way in the future, like 2000. Right, spoiler for like 2005. <laughs> yeah, but like that's what I knew, so I'm like, oh, okay, cool, interesting. Like this is like where the seeds of like, because like everybody's like, I thought you were my friend, I thought you were my friend, and I'm like, okay, the seeds even then were like 20 years earlier, like he was evil and he was plotting shit, he would totally murder all his friends. And I was like, that's fun. I, I enjoyed that. Um, um, and then didn't, I, okay. I, but I do also like uh, Saddam Hussein recruiting the uh, Global Guardians to now be part of his team. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. There's also, uh, while they're out in space fighting robots, uh, they find uh, an even rejectier reject Green Lantern named Nort, who is like... Uh, Are we in the next issue now? Yeah, yeah sure. Is, I don't that know. Is the next We're in issue. Millennium Part 5, Issue 10. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're there. Yeah, but that doesn't follow really any of our JLI except for Martian Manhunter. Right, really. There's not very Captain much. Adam. Like, I like that character. He seemed pretty cool, but uh, you know, that's it. Um, I did. Oh, th- I did like that guy because he was like a reject Green Lantern, and they're like, his dad was like a real popular guy, and he pulled some strings, and so like, it got him a ring. Yeah. <laughs> what? I, I thought it was funny. It doesn't. You're right. It doesn't make sense, but I thought it was funny. And he looks like a. I don't know. It looks like a cross between like a weasel and a rabbit, and like a cousin it kind of thing he's a neat looking creature i'd like to see more of this guy yeah uh, anyway, he looks like um like an like alf combined with some other 80s property <laughs> yeah i'm sure i'm sure jeff johns turned him into a rapist or something <laughs> oh my god yeah, let's not talk I, about let's not talk about modern dc where every character gets turned into a get rapist that that's gritty not reboot of Gnort. <laughs> uh, um bring him back as a zombie who rapes <laughs> yeah, that's great. If okay, I should you know for people who are listening to this, who are just like, are they just making rape jokes? Really, DC has done such terrible things to their characters. They are, yeah. All right, let's let's get off that. Topic. And they also had and, a huge. They had a huge event about bringing back dead characters as zombies. You know, so that's that, that's where that part comes from. Wait, what was that event? I don't Blackest Night. Oh, is that? Oh, that's Black right. Lantern. I do. You're right. You're right. You're right. Everybody that had like been killed over the last twenty five years became back as a zombie. Um, anyway. very, very cool. Anyways, Thanks, so back, he's back. in charge of all the films. Yep. Uh, back. Send, your, <laughs> send your hate mail to that guy. Cause he sucks. Yeah. Uh, so back to the next issues. Uh, so issues 11 and 12 are kind of, uh, getting back on track with our justice league international story. See what's going on with the team. Uh, a couple of them go and have a meeting with, um, 
uh, Maxwell Lord to kind of talk to him, figure out what's going on. Uh, who is it? Blue Beetle and Booster Gold? Yeah, and maybe Batman's there too. Uh, and they get attacked by a big computer uh, or something. Something's attacking them. And everyone shows up and is like, what's going on? What's going on? It's – again, it's all very fuzzy and um, they end up fighting a big giant robot. You know, for a big giant robot fight, again, this is where it really started to feel boring to me. A lot of that humor started to feel very forced. Mm. The one-liners were just kind of all over the place and I, I, this issue kind of didn't do anything for me. Uh, I, I, I totally agree. I think this book totally falls apart when it's like a fight, fight, fight book. Yeah. Like more so than other books that kind of build the fight, fight, fight. I think everything of like slow burn of like, I actually like the what's Maxwell Lord doing? Why is he talking to this robot? Yeah. You know, I like it that. I like an place and I liked it. You're right. I like blue. B- I like Batman taking meetings with Russian consulates. Um, and the Russian consul, you know, trying to bug to figure out what the Justice League's doing. I like Batman and the rest of the team not really trusting trusting the uh, Soviet guy on their team, but Rocket Red's mm-hmm. kind of like jovial and and fun. I like all those aspects of the book. I like uh, Blue Beetle and Booster Gold's friendship. It, all of those things are really really fun to me. It's just that when you decide to have a action plot on top of that that's where it's not interesting to me and to and to rag on marvel i think marvel movies are the same way i think like the first two-thirds of marvel movies are pretty interesting until they devolve into a fight right well and it's uh, and this, fair. i mean this is the same problem that marvel movies have now which is that there's no stakes to this like we know of course like the justice league's not in danger against this old robot they're literally referencing like oh yeah this is a robot we fought like 20 years ago they're like this is like mm-hmm. an old Justice League adventure we're having right now. Somebody's setting us up to do this, and so right. so they're not even like, oh no, this robot could kill us. They're like, oh, this is probably a setup by whoever the real bad guy is. Yeah, because because yeah. the book is not even like they're they're clearly like Justice League rejects or the Justice. I mean, it's not Superman. It's not you know Flash. It's not Green Lan. You know, like the good Green Lantern. It's Guy Gardner. So you're like, oh, this is kind of like people who aren't up to the task of being Justice League, which could be mm-hmm. a really interesting direction for these characters to go. Mm-hmm. And kind of after in like later years, it'd be like the characters like we used to be in Justice League, too. And everybody would be like, yeah, uh huh, whatever. Like, well, you're always no, like it's not just that, but also I, f- I have to I had to keep reminding myself that it's, nowadays you've got like, you know. Uh, all the spin-off books and there's like you know five avengers teams and a bunch of justice league teams whatever at this point this was the only justice league team right mm-hmm, they were right. like that was it and it had a f- humorous tone and had all the rejects and it just it doesn't feel like the flagship title you know what i mean it doesn't no feel... it, do- it doesn't but neither did avengers for the longest time sure sure and when, um, you know which you know was like kind of the impetus i remember when uh Mark Miller and Brian Bendis were creating the new Avengers. They were like, the reason I like J- Justice League is because I could get like Batman, Superman, Flash, Green Lantern all in all in one book together. Mm-hmm. And it seemed and like Avengers was like Captain America and Thor and Iron Man who weren't really that big of a deal. I mean, they were, but they weren't I, Spider-Man and they weren't. Well, the they're X-Men. not as big as they are now that the movies have gotten right. so popular. Right. Um, which and and then it was like, who the hell is Scarlet Witch? And, you know, and Wonder Man, like they're cool, but they're kind of like B tier yeah, really, characters. Yeah. And so, like, that's kind of what this felt like this Justice League was trying to model itself after was, yeah. like, kind of, like, B-tier heroes. Because, like, you can read Superman and Batman wherever. Like, who cares? Like, this is a good place for these characters to actually have development. And it didn't necessarily well, happen, I know. Well, but. yeah, speaking of development, it falls into that trap that a lot of team books do where it ends up developing the villain more than it does any of the individual characters. When it does start developing characters – individual members of the team i think that's when it's at its best when it's having those you know like we mentioned earlier those kind of human moments and them uh you know organizing everything i thought those are when it this book worked the greatest um and even the maxwell lord development is is neat and i enjoy seeing it but Mm -hmm. it just uh it just feels very i don't know wonky overall there's something something very off about it like it can't it can't figure itself out almost um, and if, I mean, if you're not fans of these characters already, like there's nothing in the issues we read that I'm like, oh, now I'm a big fan of anyone here. Like, yeah, 
Uh, maybe Martian Manhunter. I do like the way he's written as the boss and being kind of, like you were saying, that kind of dry sense of humor. Uh, and this is probably the best, book. like, incontinuity Martian Manhunter I've read. Right. Yeah. Really? Read I mean, it, it really just makes me want to read the uh, Justice League Detroit that came, I guess, pre crisis, where it's like oh. Martian Manhunter's leading the team and, like, Vibe joins it, like the breakdancing guy with earthquake powers. Ooh, put that on the list. I want to read that. that like, <laughs> now I just want to read this Martian Manhunter yeah. and a bunch of idiots. I'm into that. It's right. <laughs> oh, there is another fun, uh, a fun panel. I'm just flipping through it here, where uh, a couple of members of the Guardians, that other team that uh, ended up breaking up, are like, "Hey, why don't we just uh, go join the Justice League?" And the next panel is some guy going, "You want to do what?" Uh, that's all we see of them, and I, I enjoyed that moment. That's that's all. Uh, again, felt human. Uh, didn't really develop those characters. Maybe we'll see them again though. They're totally on the cover of my trade, though. And I was like, who the hell are these people? <laughs> oh, you're right. <laughs> Everyone's I was like, know. is this Hawk and Dove? I, was <laughs> I don't know who these people. Yeah, I forget their names completely. But you are right. They're on the cover. Oh, is that Fire and Ice? No, one's green and one's uh, blue. Who knows? One of them's kind of got like an icy look to her. Yeah, though. that's yeah. why I thought it was ice. Anyways, so they fight a robot. Uh, and then this other big guy comes on and he's like, Hey, that was my robot. Oh, and this robot that's been talking to Max Lord. That was, uh, that was mine too. Uh, Metron is his name. Mm -hmm. He's another new God. Again, so many new gods. I I get very confused with them and they don't really do a great job of setting people up and telling you who they are if you don't know. So, right. He's the uh, new God uh, who never uh, gets out of his chair. Okay, cool. Kind of like Thanos, yeah, that was always sitting around. Yeah. Kind of, kind of, yes. Uh, when Thanos was created, uh, he was more based on Metron, and somebody at Marvel oh. was like, "Hey, rip off Darkseid more. He's the best new god." <laughs> <laughs> interesting, interesting. Um, so while that's all happening, there's a moment where uh, Max Lord is talking to the computer, and the computer is like, "Hey, obey me," blah blah blah, and Max destroys it. Uh, even well, the though... robot. The robot has like the the, and this is spoilers for I Robot the book, I guess. The, the, the 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 robot brain eventually realizes that like the first rule of robotics is, uh, robot cannot let a human come to harm. And the the logical thing is, well, humans are really bad to each other, and they're gonna fucking kill themselves somehow. So just don't let the humans kill themselves. And so we'll just lock down the humans. And this robot's like, well, I'll just murder all the humans, and then they won't be able to kill each other, uh, which is what his thought process was. And I'm like, that doesn't really make logical sense, but okay. But Murder uh, key humans in uh, positions of power so that you can uh, govern the world in a way that will result in less total deaths. Yeah. yeah. Because I like that Max Lord is like, all right, I'm part of the Justice League now. Now, next step, I got to get Superman under my control. I'm going to get this like low level team of rejects. And then and then now they have the Justice League. Then I'll lure like the real heroes in. Like, mm-hmm. I, and then he's like and he was so excited that Superman was like in the previous issue. And he was like, yes, finally, my dream is coming true. And they're like, yeah, Superman just left. He's like, what? God damn it. I almost had him. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like that part. Yeah, that was pretty fun. Um, but yeah, he finally gets fed up with the computer and like axes it. But the computer is what was keeping him alive after the gunshot wounds. Um, and so it doesn't make a lot of sense. It doesn't make much sense either. Well, he was controlling the robot nano thingies that were like working on his wounds. Did they not already heal him? No, they were in the process of healing him, but creating like a, like a, like like treating the symptoms so he could stand, I guess. Okay. So let's think of it like a pump that was actively like connecting different parts of his body. How about that? Yeah. It was like, it was like a pacemaker. Sure. Okay. Cool. cool, cool. I'll, I'll buy that. I'll buy that. Okay. To me, it seemed like he'd already been healed, and then it's like, oh that's no, what because that's what I thought. Yeah. yeah, because well, that, that the, the robot's gone. Now I am unhealed. Yeah, but they never. Which, did, I don't know if the robot ever said beforehand, like, "Hey, I have these robots down here." Yeah, um, they never mentioned it. Like, it's a fun sacrifice moment. Like, oh, he was willing to turn good, even though it hurt himself. But they didn't play it up at all. You know. Uh, there was so much more opportunity there to actually talk about what was going on, and um, they didn't. Max so, yeah. Lord totally murdered his boss to get into a position of power, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so or now not like, really. They, well, now everyone respects him, so I guess later, twenty years from now, he can go kill Blue Beetle, whatever. And he's also um, he's also got psychic powers. That what that happens that? after another thing. That, that there was like a okay. big DC universe here. crossover that. Uh, 
that gave a bunch of people powers. Uh, and he was that was the gene one. bomb? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's that's what it was. Um, <laughs> we mentioned that before, Obama. didn't we? For some but, reason. Yeah, I don't know what we were covering. But the gene, uh, yeah, the bomb of genes showed up. Um, they also get a new red rocket. No, rocket red. Uh, and this guy's kind of fun, Dimitri. Uh, he's always like misusing American slang and talking about things you like, quoting Rocky and Bullwinkle. I like that yep. guy. He's pretty cool. He's cool. He's, uh, he's, he's all right, but I don't like that Batman is like calling out his like lame catchphrases and things. Like mm-hmm. Batman wouldn't care. That's There's not also what a moment offended. in the next issue. Uh, sorry, Vince, what were you going to say? No, it's just not what ba- Batman would be offended by. Yeah, you're right. There's also a moment in the next issue where Batman's kind of acting like a spoiled little kid. Like, they're going to, um, I don't know, some country to meet some prisoner. Oh, it's Russia. Okay. Uh, we're, we're in issue 13, the last issue of this, Suicide Squad versus Justice League. So we get yeah. to see some 80s era Suicide Squad. Yeah. Which, you know, which was neat, I guess. Which, um, I didn't really care which about is, it. Actually, I didn't realize how much i just assumed like suicide squad like they took the name and then just decided to cherry pick villains to put in the suicide squad movie which mm-hmm. they kind of did yeah which they kind of did like harley quinn especially harley and Joker, harley quinn's yeah. the main one yes yeah but um but i did not realize that one amanda waller was always suicide squad's handler what um, i guess I, you've never read any suicide squad no i never have i didn't realize that deadshot was in it and captain boomerang and rick flag were all part of the suicide squad like i was like oh they actually tell like half their team is actually like makes sense with the comics, which I, I did not have that much respect for that movie to think it would have done that. <laughs> yeah, there you yeah. go. I thought it would well, be like Guardians of the Galaxy where it was kind of like eh, half and half. Yeah, um, this I uh, like this that. Suicide Squad was fine, though. Um, but what, this issue movie? did not. Yeah, Wait, I thought the movie? it was fine. Yeah. Uh, All right. OK, we're I haven't seen it, so I can't comment, but I'm pretty sure you're wrong. So that I guess that's technically the comment. I, well, it's it's like one of those things where you go and expecting like the worst and it's not. Oh, all right. Worst. Yeah. You'd already heard that it was terrible. So you were like, hey, that was better and, than terrible. And it's better than Batman versus Superman, which, again, is not a high bar. Not but, a high bar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, saw that, I saw that X-Men movie thinking it would be like a two star movie. And I was like, this is like a three star movie. Oh, <laughs> Um, but yeah, this issue doesn't really make me want to read Suicide Squad at all. Um, this is actually and... a two-part. Are you going to read part two? Fuck no. I... <laughs> hey, if it's any consolations, well... the Suicide Squad comic from the 80s is better than this. All right. That's fair. Oh. I was looking at it, and I was like, you know, maybe if it's written by the same person, I might uh, check it out. But, um, yeah, uh, it's so – again, there's no stakes. I don't – they don't do a good job in the plotting of explaining why a lot of things are happening. It's just like this needs to happen and this needs to happen. Batman's very angry because he has to talk to some person, and I'm not even sure who this person is or why Batman wants to talk to him. It's just – I don't know why that is, and then like I thought the Suicide Squad was going to go find them. But then somehow the Justice League was going to go find them. But then now they're going to fight the Suicide Squad. I didn't yeah. understand what happened there either. I like I read it like three times, and I'm like, I don't I don't know what's going on here. And I feel like there is a story here, and I feel like it's not a bad story. But overall, the plotting just feels off. Like it doesn't need all these extra attempts at jokes. I'd rather just have a little bit more clarity in the story. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I There's parts of this whole thing that I really love and parts of it that I'm just like, why am I reading this? Uh, and so it's kind of all over the map for me. Oh, we should uh, – Max Max Lord's origin story I thought was really nice um, because it's the first moment of just like, hey, here's everything that's been going on. Like I said earlier, it kind of recaps – the whole uh, first arc and everything up through the second arc, like this is why I uh, had this person join the team and blah, blah, blah. It's interesting. I just, it's just everything feels so off to me. I don't know. Yeah. This issue is not particularly great. No. It's, I mean, I don't even know if this whole arc is particularly great. I think there's a general, general feel around the book that makes me happy, but like, it's better than the sum of its parts. I, I completely parts. understand that. I, I feel like this book probably is super important and influential for, uh, you know, making Booster Gold and Blue Beetle such a popular, such a popular pair, you know. And I'm, I'm sure as we go through this and you see more of it, uh, it it'll pick up. But I, I just don't want to wade through everything else to get there. Um, and I, yeah. I mean, I do think it's interesting how, you know, the Suicide Squad and JLI, you know, they they pair off in the issue 
and they kind of have these different, you know, I think it's kind of nice that they're not just fighting, that there's a couple of fights, but then, like, Vixen, and I mean, and again, like, I don't blame you, Kia, for not knowing what the hell is going on, but, like, Vixen and Martian Manhunter have, like, a heart-to-heart where Vixen's like, oh, since I left the Justice League, like, shit's been really real, and, you know, like, uh, Captain Adam is just, like, going off to, like, make out with his girlfriend instead of fighting. <laughs> See, that's pretty funny. I enjoy that. That's that's a, that's good. And then, like, but... they're all kind of like, where's Batman? And then he's in this just, like, never-ending brawl with Rick Flagg. So I thought that was kind of neat that, you know, it's kind of like, this is the one guy that just won't stop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, but, like, it, it was hard to wade through, like, what didn't make sense to get right, to those moments. Right. Mm-hmm. I would read like a best of the JLI with just like all the human moments and the fighting and plotting and overall stuff like kind of cut out of it. I think that would be a really fun collection um, if there was a way to make that happen, but probably not. Uh, DC, get on it. Just release. <laughs> just the uh, fun stuff. I mean, I wonder if Patton, Patton Oswald had a book called formerly known as the Justice League, which follows these characters and was definitely like a humor book. I wonder if that'd be more up our alley. I'm sure that would be fun. Uh, but, I, you know, like I said, I'm sure there's parts of this that were a ton of fun. I don't regret reading this, uh, and I'm glad I did. I'm glad I have a better understanding of where all this stuff kind of came from. Yeah, just a little also, rough. Also, because I don't know when else I would ever bring this up, Captain Adam's costume in the DC Universe at this time is such a pile of shit. I didn't yeah. like it I'll at What is all. that supposed to like, be? <laughs> Do you think that's like what an Adam looks like? It's Colossus with a red splotch on his chest. Like, that's what he looks like to me. Every time I see him, I was like, I would genuinely, there was one moment and I was like, what's Colossus? Oh, wait, no, that's, uh, that's Captain Adam. Never mind. Right. He's, he's uh, not quite as buff as Colossus, but then, like, every time I see that thing, I'm like, is that, like, the Canadian flag or something? Yes. I often thought Canadian flag, too. It's such a just, it's like a Rorschach test uh, on his chest of just, like, a red, <laughs> and that's. <laughs> Like, you can uh, control matter, you idiot. Make a better costume than this. <laughs> oh, <laughs> poor guy. Poor guy. Um, and he's so got, yeah, like, uh, he's got guess... red gloves and then just silver nothing. What a, what a moron. What, who could possibly yeah. like Captain Adam? I, I sure don't. Um... Although he's pretty cool in the Justice League Unlimited cartoon. Again, if you like some of these characters, I, I was really excited to see some of them because I like them all in the Justice League cartoon. Uh, yeah. Black Canary especially gets uh, some really good treatment in that uh, show. Uh, and, yeah, just didn't really get much of it here. Um, but anyways, another, another Watchmen character question. crossover. Great in Justice League uh, Unlimited. The question I thought was great in Justice League Unlimited. Um, yeah, anyways, this isn't a Justice League Unlimited <laughs> podcast. It's Justice League International. And, um, well, I think we're just about wrapping up on uh, this whole story. Anything else anyone wants to say about uh, about this? Well, the story ends with Batman quitting in a huff, which we didn't mention. Oh, see, I didn't even read pe- to the... So I should say, I, a lot of us, we were all reading from the Volume 2 trade, which includes the Suicide Squad story that kind of continues it. And so Batman leaves in a huff at the end of the Suicide Squad issue? Yeah. He's like, I'm out of here. Yeah. You guys suck. That seems like kind of an important development to to put in someone else's uh, uh, comic. You know what I mean? To have... Anyways, doesn't matter. Vince, you got it? Yeah, I, cr- crossovers are always problematic for that because I'm like, I don't, I, I hate like when... Because they just mess up like collections and stuff. Marvel Unlimited has a real problem with that. Like even this yeah. is like... Okay, so I saw issues one and five of Millennium, but I didn't see the whole like thing. Not that I wanted to read it anyways. No. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's like uh, I don't know. Um, I, I I like this book as I've said, but you know, it's problematic in places. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. it it definitely is a it, it's a stark contrast to other stuff we've read of this era of DC of the eighties. Yeah, I mean this like. this is really deliberate. I mean, I like the idea behind this. I wish I liked this more because. I don't know if yeah. I've talked about it on this podcast, but I feel like 1987 kind of ruined comics for a long time because that was the year a lot of great comics came out, but they were all like very serious, like, oh, comics are adult things now. 
Mm-hmm. Like Frank yeah, Miller and I'm stuff well, and, just, yeah. just like poor imitations of trying to to, to mimic that, right. like really ruined e- comic. Even yeah. even Craven's Last Hunt, which came out in Amazing Spider-Man, which is like a comic that at the time was on you know newspaper, you know uh, you could just pick it up like anywhere, and it's about Craven burying Spider-Man alive. Like it has no business being a Spider-Man, like a regular monthly Spider-Man comic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, And this is like 1988. It was a direct response to uh, 1987. And so this is like 1988. And they're just like, we're just going to make like the stupidest, silliest book we we want. We know that like this isn't going to be Superman. This isn't going to be Batman. Mm -hmm. It's just going to be its own thing. And I wish I liked it better. uh I w- you know, I'd heard it was like like Vince was saying. I'd heard it was the fun, silly Justice League, and I wish it had been sillier because the main plot was just two ho hum evil bad guy, you know, fight robots, and, whatever. And you, and you 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 really pick hit the nail on the head with no stakes. I hadn't mm-hmm. picked up what, what was wrong about it, but yeah, that's entire. Which is weird because like essentially they are like C listers and D listers who have now been thrust into becoming the Justice League that they're not ready for it, and yet. Like that kind of stakes isn't even in the book at all. Well, because yeah. none like what I liked about um, Teen Titans, I guess we can compare this mm-hmm. to the closest uh, when we read that, because a lot of the stakes were a lot of the villains and the what was going on was so closely related to uh, the character of Starfire. Right. Um, in that Raven. first arc. Raven. Ra- sorry, Raven. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. And um, and so it was nice because not only are you kind of getting to a, a big story, but it's also telling you a little bit more about these characters. Whereas with this, nobody feels connected to Maxwell Lord at all. Uh, until they mentioned it in the recap, I didn't know that Maxwell Lord had brought Booster Gold in. Uh, you know, which I guess is on me for not reading the first volume, but at the same time... If but him and Booster mattered, never hang out. Yeah, right. if it had mattered, then maybe it would have made a difference, you know? Uh, and it just didn't. It was also, hey, this has happened in the past, but it's uh, it's important because we say it's important, not because it feels important. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, so when, uh, uh, hey, our next uh, segment. <laughs> you going to yeah, keep reading I- this? Uh, I'm not. I probably won't. No. Uh, I mean, like I said, we, we talked about it, but it's just kind of like you, when you want to sort of have comedy, it needs to be kind of natural from the character and not just like yuck, 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 which is I feel like the a lot of the comedy in this is. a lot, And a lot of like wordplay at certain points, yeah. which you know, don't get me wrong. I love wordplay, but it feels weird in the middle of a fight, you know, like, yeah, uh, I don't know. I wish especially I had- especially because the artist is, I mean, um is it Kevin Maguire, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I mean, he does a great job with facial expressions and like conveying comedy that when they're just like, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, shut up and let like the artist be funny because this is a comic. And (laughs) if it's funny, like he'll convey it through the panel and all of your text will just get in the way. Right. Mm hmm. Um, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, all right. I think that's all we've got to say <laughs> on uh, the topic of Justice League. Uh, next time on the show, we are uh, going back and talking about Power Man, a.k.a. Luke Cage. That's because his uh, Netflix show is coming out uh, very soon. So next time we are talking about uh, some old Power Man comics, uh, specifically Power Man 48 through 50. Uh, that's right before... Iron Fist joined him, and so we're also going to look at Power Man and Iron Fist 59 through 60. Uh, so it's basically Power Man 48 through 50, 59 through 60, five issues total, first half without Iron Fist, second half with. Uh, mm-hmm. Makes sense? What year are these from? Like, um... 78-ish? Yeah, mid, yeah late into 70s. late 70s. Uh, Which, uh, we haven't read any of this era. I We've been talking around John Byrne for the last few episodes, so I've been wanting to check out some John Byrne uh, and Chris Claremont, obviously a big X-Men writer. And I know that Ed Brubaker said that Byrne and Claremont's first year on Iron Fist is like the best comic he's ever read uh, So or had read up to that point. So mm-hmm. I, I would like to read their Iron Fist also when the Iron Fist TV show comes out. And this is kind of just, I guess, a primer for me sure. to get yeah, in the Claremont fun. Byrne feeling. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, and we've got a lot of different char- uh, creators moving in and out, but we'll talk about those next time when we're talking about it. Um, but yeah, uh, other than that, if, uh, you know, follow us on uh, Twitter uh, at We're Right Here uh, or, uh, oh. you know, uh, subscribe to our Anchor podcast. All my friends are right here. Uh, I, I feel bad, stuff, too, uh, downing, downing this book. If you want to read a fun team book that uh, has good character moments, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy by Abnett and Lanning as the 2008, Ooh. I think, somewhere in there. Uh, it's on Marvel Unlimited. It's all collected on there. Uh, that's a really fun book. That it's not okay. the team from the movie, but it's a really it's a lot of fun. Don't read the Bendis one from like 2011 or 12, where it becomes the movie team. That's bad. All right, good to know. Yeah, that's legit. Um, yeah, Abden Landing did a lot of good, and that kind of spun out of Keith Giffen's Annihilation event. Mm-hmm. Giffen. Yeah, I, and you know we didn't talk too much about a lot of these before we go. Let's do that. Let's <laughs> talk about these writers and their pedigrees a little bit because Giffen did a really great job doing a bunch of cool outer space stuff with Marvel and kind of uh, essentially establishing the new Gardens of the Galaxy uh, for Marvel. Giffen also, I think, plotted all of Fifty Two for DC, which actually yeah. did follow Booster Gold a bit. Giffen is more of a plotter than an actual like script writer. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he plotted all of Annihilation but didn't right. write it. He didn't. I don't right. think he wrote any of the scripts for JLI either. Right. He, he just, just plotted, plotted this it. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he he's a he's a cool dude. He's a, he's like a I don't know if he's an editor so so much, but he's like really good at corralling writers and like plotting big stories and then helping writers write the rest of the story. Um, and uh, if yeah, and JLI I think came back in. Did it come back in the new Fifty Two and like was canceled within a year? Um, I think they did. Probably there was like five I, Justice League teams. There was like Dark and uh, just regular Justice League. Um, yeah, but that was okay. Um, Kevin McGuire did a backup book of the Doom Patrol, not Doom Patrol, <laughs> the Metal Men. I always get them confused. Uh, <laughs> But you can find Booster Gold books by Dan Jurgens, the creator of Booster, through like from there's always Booster Gold on. There's also you know I talked a little bit about the Justice League Unlimited cartoon. There's one particular episode that features Booster Gold where the rest of the Justice League is doing something and he kind of gets sucked into his own little side adventure. It's a really fun episode. I recommend it. I think it won an award or maybe it was nominated for an award or something. I wish I could remember what it was called. Uh, but, you know. uh, yeah, but yeah, I think Billy West voices Skeets in that. Hmm? Oh, yeah, he does. Fry. Oh, our, our little Fry. Uh, Skeets. Skeets is cool. Skeets, Skeets is like his future robot that hangs out with him and like gives him info. Uh, I wish he was in this. I wonder where, when he shows up. Maybe, maybe I'll go back and read Skeets' introduction because that might be fun. Um. All right. Cool. Jerkin's books that's are hit and miss for me, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Anyway. <laughs> all right. Well, hey, thank you so much for listening. Uh, is there anything else we wanted to plug? Uh, Chris, your stupid minds. What are y'all up to? Uh, we just had a great. If you like uh, the idea of robots not understanding Asimov's laws, we just did an episode. I guess it'll be a week ago when this comes out about T Force, a team of robots Ooh. who. Uh, when some, when a mayor orders their shutdown, they turn on the mayor and murder everyone. Whoa, awesome. cool! It's great. Uh, have y'all done Small Soldiers yet? For some reason, I don't know why I just thought of Small Soldiers, but starring David Cross and Phil Hartman. <sighs> wow, Phil Hartman. Weird. Yeah, yeah he they, was they, in that. the the Small Soldiers pointed a lot of guns at Phil Hartman, and they edited that out uh, after his death. <laughs> Uh, I, I remember. I also remember Sherry O'Terry played a call center lady. Where's she at these days? Sherry O'Terry. Oh well. Uh, <laughs> well, that was our little tangent about uh, movies about things trying to kill you. Thank you so much for listening to some <laughs> of my friends read comics uh, for Vince and Chris and myself, Kia. Uh, thank you again, and we love you so much. Have a good night. Bye.